This is off a Z1000 Kawasaki. I want to make them fit on a ZD1000 Kawasaki. The spacing between the uh, cylinders 1 and 2 and cylinders 3 and 4 are identical. However, on a ZD1000, there is 13 millimeter space difference between the ZD1000 and the Z1000. So, what that's going to have to happen here is I'm going to have to spread these apart by 13 millimeters. So, in order to do that, it's going to cause me to have to build a larger, a 13 millimeter wide spacer in here, and the coupling between these cylinder or these throttle bodies and that throttle bodies is going to have to be extended. Uh, I'm going to remove the actuator for the secondary throttle plates and uh, that should do it for this side. Now on the injector side, let me get this out of the vise here. On the injector side, the only problem is this is going to have to be extended by 13 millimeters. If I can do those things without screwing it up, they will fit and bolt up to the the uh, boots on the uh, ZG1000. Now here's an issue on the the boots on the ZG1000 are exactly the same size as this. So I could come up with a hose, a very strong radiator hose that would fit over this and fit over the boot. Simple, right? Except for this would be butt up against the boot. So the boot's going to have to have a notch cut in it so that the, the injector can actually spray into the throttle or into the head. So that's another thing. But if I can do those four things, I can make this fit. Okay. <clears throat> the lower two sets uh, easily separated because there was uh, this piece right in between these springs as you would on a, a set of carburetors and they just slid apart very easily but this has a pin driven through it I guess so it mates with the uh, the little motor here that turns these secondary uh, throttle plates so I have to drive that pin out so I can slide the shaft completely out so I can uh, actually separate these two sets. Okay, now they're separated. I've got this, which is going to just go in the in the bin. So, but I've got two sets now. I need to put a 13 millimeter uh, spacer here and here. And somehow figure out how to bridge this gap between this one and this one. I should, I could probably fabricate something that connects those two. And on the injectors, I'm going to have to splice a 13 millimeter pipe between the two. Okay, there's everything with the spacers in between. That should fit perfectly. Let's see. Hard to do with one hand. Okay, those are already lined up. Let's get those lined up. Check the other two. They are dead on. So, 13 millimeter spacer made to fit. Okay, I've got the two halves put back together using the. These are. 13 or 12 and a half and I uh, tapered down one end of it to fit inside that end so that it doesn't wobble around and it's a M5 screw 45 millimeters long with a lock washer and a regular washer on the end and then on the other side there's I did it at three points there's really nothing to bite into up here so what I did is I started the 
this threaded through here. Put uh, these two nuts on here, and uh, when I got it close to being right, I put another nut in here, torque that down, then snug this end up, and then snug that end up. So now I've got three points of uh, contact to hold these guys, and they're solid as a rock. So now, next thing is to try to fix this, which is this used to fit in here. First thing I got to do is find that spring that belongs in there. But anyhow, this used to ride in here on that screw, and now it's 13 millimeters apart. So I'm going to have to bridge this with the probably just a little tab of metal with a screw through it. So uh, I think it's uh, getting close to going in the motorcycle soon. Yeah, I cut this one out of sheet metal, and uh, I'm going to give it a little more strength by uh, putting a kink in it. So. Okay. Hey, focus. Focus. There we go. Got that in there. And check in for spring now. It is, there's no give to that whatsoever. Put a bend in it so that it, it can't uh, really flex without fighting itself. So, uh, that's pretty good. I need to tighten this back down because uh, I backed that off about three turns, so I'm going to have to put that back. But I think we're getting closer and closer. Yeah, I forgot this part. In order to make sure this is all level here, I just put a, uh, a level on it, and then I... Uh, where the hell is the camera? Oh, tighten this with this Allen wrench through this last hole here, and uh, tighten the distance between here and here to make sure that this is level and then uh, once I get that done then tighten down that screw and that screw okay that's <clears throat> that little screw I had in there kept uh, stripping out so I boarded it out to a size 440 and threw it that put a nut on it not super tight but uh, just to make sure it doesn't move I'm going to put a little daub of, uh, of epoxy on both sides and uh, make sure that it, it doesn't back out because it's hard to get to if it does. Next thing I need to do is uh, sink both sides. Now the way I do sink is I put a shim in here to get this thing open and then uh, I use a drill bit, a tiny drill bit as the uh, gauge, and I close it down until it just grabs hold of that it's the drill bit. Okay, so now it's got a good bite on it, and then I just open it until it lets go, okay? Now when it's when it lets go and it can fall through, that's my gauge. And I'm gonna do that to the other side and that should be perfect. This was a little more difficult than what I had anticipated. Uh, I was just planning on cutting this in the center and leaving half of it in here and half of it over there. However, there wasn't enough left to put the uh, uh, the clamp on and get a good bite so luckily I had another old fuel rail uh, fitting that I, I cut the entire piece off of it and stuck it in here and then uh, that that bridged the gap now there's, there's maybe an eighth of an inch between here and this the end of this so uh, that should seal it up but I hated to waste another <laughs> piece of fuel rail, but uh, oh well.